I enjoy my time there. I, I really disconnect from the world. I put the cell phone away and, and we just um, catch up. As most of you know, finding friends as an adult is hard. And as the only woman of this group, I haven't really found any female friends since we've settled here, yeah. moved here. So I do really um, embrace and enjoy the time that I spend with my hair lady. And then again, you know, I've been seeing her for so long. She knows of the business and our travels and we've settled. And I know about her two adult daughters. And I love listening to the wedding plans that have been going on now for a year and a half. So I uh, I really enjoy that. I think what? you just hurt Jerry's feelings. Sorry. When I want to hear you that. Said, when you said that you're the only woman in the group. Sorry, hey, Jerry. everybody. Welcome to the Outer Belt Podcast. I'm Patrick, and you all know my friends. Shildy. Buttermilk. Eric. And Jerry. And we're coming to you uh, from the Outer Belt Studios here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, a little sad we don't have our production assistant with us today. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm bummed about that. He's are missed. Yeah, you are missed, but I understand. Um, he's having a little computer issues. So, uh, what are you bringing him back that he doesn't know necessarily 100% about? A uh, brand new laptop. Nice. <laughs> Lenovo? Apple. Um, Lenovo. That, would be, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, you, go, you go back with the $299 <laughs> Toshiba from Walmart. You're like, here you go. He uh. told me that he told you about it, and I was actually thinking in the back of my mind. Like, I was, I was curious the specs of what you were getting him, if it's going to be... So better than he has. That would be I funny did, to go because purchase. the one he has, he has a MacBook Air from okay. 1926. No, 2019. But his MacBook Air is fully specced. Right. We're talking 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. Like he got the top of the line model. And if he's having problems with 16 gigs of RAM now, yeah. and you get a MacBook Pro that's got eight because they come with eight to start with. Like, but is he running a, a Intel? He's if it's 2019, it's an Intel. He has right? the M1. Okay. All then right. why he got the it? first M1. Oh, then he may not be getting much of an upgrade. Then what's the problem with it? It's, I, I don't know. Everything he does, and when it comes to the VR, VMRs, it comes to a crawl. Like, it, I don't know if it's everything he has open, the tabs. Could I be. was thinking it was the memory. Yeah. I, that was my first thought upstairs, and you mentioned that was maybe memory, but I wonder if it's just something else going on. It needs, needs to be refreshed and start over. And that might be something that a good thing to do is once he gets everything swapped over, yeah. refresh that one. Because everything they do is in the cloud. They all their stuff they upload exactly. is Google Drive. Yep. Like and he it, doesn't save anything. And, you know? and even the VMRs that we do, it, for those of you who don't know, VMR is a vehicle maintenance report, and we have to do it with the carriers for every single truck we own. Both FedEx and Panther have them. Uh, it's just a document spread. It's just a document, so it's PDF, which uses. Very, very, very little should use memory little resources. So I mean, that's that is the kind of thing you can do on a two hundred forty nine dollar right. laptop from Walmart. So I'm thinking it's just everything he has open because he's running an open phone in the background. He's literally yeah. he literally has two Safari windows open. How often does he turn it off? I argue with him on that part a lot. I try to get him to shut it down every night, but it's hard to shut it down because as soon as he shuts it down, that phone's going to ring and he needs it. So it's difficult. Sometimes he'll do it in the mornings. He'll restart Restart. everything. I can't tell you how many times we've had issues or Eric's had issues on a computer, and he's like, can't get this to work. It's just frustrating me to no end. And I'm like, turn it off, turn it back on. And he does that, and that's the end of the – Well, Don, uh, we hope you enjoy your uh, gift that uh, – what's your name again? Jerry. Jerry is bringing back – and, again, we miss you. Hope you are – done with your task soon yeah that's for sure yeah any so, news what's up well i i wouldn't be an outer belt podcast if we didn't talk about or an outer belt show if we didn't talk about the weather i was gonna say the weather oh my and goodness. the weather has been something <laughs> something that yeah, you can call it that it's been everything <laughs> Crazy. it's been all over the place 70 degree degree days Followed by 65 degree days with thunderstorms and tornado watches and 30 degree days. I, I don't know if I'm wearing my long johns or my shorts. I, I, it's just, been just today at the yard. Yes. Friggin' hell storms. You know. Friggin' hell storms. Hell froze over apparently. But not even storms. 
Can that you was tell how so upset I am by this weather? You seem a little grumpy. <laughs> I'm so upset with this weather right now. I see we're going to push through it, it, though, and we're going to get to the other side of I know. Just think of April weather. Listen, we're April, and it's finally happening. Spring is here. So tomorrow, of course, it's snowing. Snowing. <laughs> snowing. <laughs> snowing. Yes. Like I was thinking the other day, <laughs> if we're already having this crazy weather now, I wonder what summer is going to bring. Do you think we're going to have? You a know lot what, Jerry? Jerry don't even don't even a nice storm. A nice storm. A nice storm. Jerry, a nice storm. Don't even wonder about summer. Let's just deal with today. No, we're it's having just, we're having a. My goodness. Aren't we having the largest sciatic, sciatica sciatica? <laughs> uh, uh, what are they called again? Um, little bugs. Cicada. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're having the largest cicada season ever yes. this year. Yep. That'll be fun. Yep, wear your earplugs when you sit on the patio. Oh my like gosh, do you remember millions. them? Do you remember them from like two years ago? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. they were so loud. We didn't really get like they weren't aggressive, which was fine. But what we did get was the smell of their dead, rotting bodies. Really, I didn't know that was a thing. That was a thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it they're all over the concrete and stained everything. Yeah, so can't wait for that. Yeah. I need to move back to California. No, you don't. <laughs> California really is having, they're have having no snow, they're to. having floods, yeah. they're having drought. They've got a brand new lake. Well, a brand <laughs> new, <laughs> brand new old brand lake. New. Yeah. You know, it's insane. I'm just weather. I'm just over weather. Yeah, but like a month ago, they had like an empty empty lake bed with a church that they found from like 100 yeah, years right. ago. Exactly. Yep. Uh I have to say, I did talk to my mom in North Carolina, and she's like, oh, the sun's shining here, and it's warm. She's already getting close to 80, and I'm like, not here yet. She's not that old. The weather, <laughs> not her. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. The weather, yeah. I know. Let's talk about anything else, like pulling my fingernails out or something. <laughs> the weather, it's so frustrating. Well, we were just down uh, at the truck show with all of y'all, and, and, and the, the video last week came out really great. Thank you, Jerry, for putting that together. Sorry you couldn't be on camera, but you did a wonderful job filming and editing it. Um, and a lot of that B-roll was actually from uh, Don, right? He did a lot of that B-roll. He got a lot for me on the GoPro. He went outside and... Some really cool trucks out there that I didn't even see when we were at the show. I know. So. I, that, I, I like that. The out, when I watch the videos, I'm like, look at all those trucks The one inside. with the dinosaur. Uh, yeah, that's that what I cool. said, too. Yeah. 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 That was cool. Yeah, he did good. Yeah. That was a rough day. Yeah. Whew, man. Thank goodness for the padded carpet. We have always, yeah, right? <laughs> we have always done uh, that show in three days. And this was the first time we crammed it all into one day. It wasn't our goal. We no, actually... Our intention was to go out there uh, for two days, Thursday and Friday. And uh, upon coming into Louisville, the interstate ended up getting shut down. So we had to go all the way to Lexington and back up, and we just lost way too much time. Way so we weren't much. able to make it out on Thursday. So we had to cram everything into one day. It was still a pretty cool show. I mean, I enjoyed everything I saw. I don't know that ARI had anything that blew me away. That's usually the booth that I think of for, like, the really cool sleeper stuff. Like yeah. one year they had a slide out. I thought that was really neat. Yeah. And it was the whole wall slid out. They had another year where they had the hot tub the hot jacuzzi. Tub. That was last year. Yeah, yep. was last year. Well, yep. um, not this year, but last year. Yes. But this year, I don't know. You you, you like the U-shaped kitchen. kitchen in the back. Uh, but after thinking about it, it had some flaws. But overall, yeah. I liked it. Yes. Yeah. Um, the <laughs> It's funny, the, the Fido booth. Their truck just made me think of the two we bought. Yeah. You know, it's funny because last time we were at the show last year, if you saw a recap video from last year, we were talking about this is what our trucks are going to be like. Yeah. And now that we have them, it's like, huh. yeah, looks, looks just like, just like our trucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and I didn't so, understand the dishwasher in the one. Like, do you really have that many dishes? It's two of you. I agree. What are you hosting a party? And most of the time, people are doing know. paper Sometimes plates. Sometimes, whenever I cooked, I wish I had a dishwasher. But it's not a full size. That, my thing is, it's not a full size residential dishwasher. No. Like, don't get me wrong. When we cook here, like, so sometimes all six of us will have dinner here. We'll cook. We'll, you know, and now there's six cups, six plates. Yeah, I get that. Skillets, all that stuff. And so I, I fill the dishwasher up, turn it on, and I don't have to worry about it. But the dishwasher, but that if I'm at a house, I have a full size dishwasher yeah that dishwasher is just one drawer yeah and it's kind of like um it was two they had a top and a bottom did it oh was the top of dishwasher drawer yeah. too 
There well, that's two. that's really overkill then. Oh, I've never seen that. I've only. I'm I'm pretty sure. The picture you sent me had two. At any rate, I still yeah. don't understand yeah. it when there's only two of you living in it. And again, most of us out here use paper products. I do get if you're in something like that, you yeah. might use true. The top is dishes. a microwave. Ah. Uh, yeah. Still stainless, stainless steel trim, but the top was a microwave. Can you okay. even fit a plate in it? Yeah, you can get a plate there. In there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the middle. Not much of one, but yeah. Speaking of the dishwasher, though, not one person commented and said they found it. It was pretty quick. I I didn't want to make it real obvious. Right, yeah. yeah. I did see it in the video. I saw it in the video, too. I don't know. I don't get it in a truck. And then you're using a lot of water. Dishwashers do take a lot of water. They do use a lot of water. And the trucks don't really carry. It's like one thing I I used to hear all the time back in the day, and I'm going to mention it. Now people are going to start commenting about it is, why don't you see washing machines in these trucks? These big, massive, not, not the size we have, but like the... The big 168, 180-inch sleepers. Why are there not washing machines in there? There's plenty of room. RVs have those all-in-one. It's a washer and a dryer. You put your clothes in there, and four hours, five hours later, you have a set of dry clothes. Well, there's RVs that have the stackables, Um, too. I think we're going to make the same point. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying for a space saving, they make the single one. Why are they not putting those in these trucks? And it usually comes down to the water. Water. Well, and RVs, my point was going to be RVs, when you're parked at a, at, a, at a campground, you've got access to water. Yes. Or these trucks, you might park at the campground occasionally, but you're out there to make money. You're going to keep rolling. You're not going to have time to stop it somewhere and plug in the water to do, do your, 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 your laundry. But you can't put much in there. Sorry, you can't put much in there. You're talking a pair of pants. Yeah. Oh, and the small ones? Yeah, yeah. the small yeah. ones are very maybe, small. Maybe all of your under drawers, your, your underclothing, all of it. Yeah. So those are, what, 10, 12 single items? I don't know how often you do laundry. So Seven? I've got, so the, the, the 40-foot RV we have has a sing, has one of those Splendid single, small, washer-dryer combination. I could put a change of clothes in it. That's it. So, like, if I, you know, go to take a shower in the afternoon or in the evening, throw all my clothes in the, in the washing machine that night, they will be done. And, and that is the complete... You know, a pair of jeans, right. a shirt, uh, socks and drawers, and that's it. Nothing else you can do. Like, period. If if it comes to, like, towels and wash rags, maybe two towels wow. and two wash yeah. rags. And how long is But even that's pushing it. It's long. It's like, um, it's about four hours for a total cycle. So wash and dry. Wash and dry. Now, they do make, the one on my RV is vented. So it actually has, like, a dryer vent like you'd have at your house. Right. Um, but they do make them that don't require that, and those are, like, six hours. Wow. They take a lot longer. Wow. Um, for, for one day's out close. Mm-hmm. And it uses, like, 80 gallons of water. It's a lot. Maybe 40 gallons of water. But still, still, it's a lot. A lot. Of water. It's a lot of water. And you're talking about our trucks carry 12 to 14 gallons of <laughs> yeah. water on them. Yeah. The, the bathroom trucks have about 28 gallons of yeah. water on them. Like, it... So, again, that's why you don't see those in the dishwasher. Same thing. It doesn't use 28 gallons of water, but it might use 10. More than you want well, it Well, that's to. all your water. Yeah. yeah. And, and also at a campground, you were talking about, uh, you know, when you when you have an RV and you hook up to a campground, the RV is designed for pressurized water. Sure. The trucks are not. They're not. It's just a tank, and when it's full, it overflows. Yes. So yeah. you literally have to, f- when you're at, tr- at a, at a uh, campground, you top off your tank. Right. You do whatever you're doing. You're camping. You're having fun. You go shower. Um, it's time for the next person to shower. You got to go refill the yep. tank back up. Turn it back on. Yep. Um, and they got real yep. small wastewater tanks. Uh, if they even if have they that, have one. some some don't. Yeah. Some manufacturers don't put wastewater tanks on at all. So, uh, so that water goes straight to the ground. It's gray water, so it's legal. There's always a tank for black water. So if you have a toilet in your in your truck, there's always a black water tank because that's not legal to dump on the ground. But still, it's like. You gotta have something to do with all this sure. stuff, and yeah. and yeah. so it's cool. It reminded me a lot of the hot tub. Extremely neat. Yeah. Very impractical. Very yes. impractical. Absolutely. Very impractical. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that because was because you can. That's what it reminded me of. Because you can. Why not? Yeah. Because you can. If you have the space again, when you have a hundred eighty inch sleeper, which I think that thing was, you have so much space. You're just finding stuff to fill, right? Yeah. Um. We work in a much tighter 
you know, try to range of things. So, like, on our straight trucks, our small sleepers are 96 inches. Our, our bigger ones are, with the showers, are 110, 120, something like that. So every inch matters. Right. Like, every little inch is a give or take. Every Every inch of counter space is less closet you got, is less bed you get. Like, every little thing is a give or take. So we've got a, what we feel like is a pretty good balance of that in the designs we have. But it's really give or take. When you have 180 inches, just you throw, some, play yeah, throw some yeah. crap in there. Who cares? Yeah. Like, it, it really, you don't have to be as efficient. You don't have to be as considerate. Right. Um, because that was one too. They had a weird situation with a TV or something as well. It was in the kitchen. That's what it was I was. In the, it was in the back corner of the kitchen. Yeah. Opposite where the couch would be if the bed was. Up. Yeah. So they um, had a couch instead of a dinette set. Right. So yes. if someone was working in the kitchen, they're blocking the TV. Yeah. In, in that corner. So it, it, it was just. And then it had two poles for your t- your dinette your dinette set. set your so table. basically, like two TV trays is what it amounted yeah. to. Yeah. And then in my thought, well, once you got those tables set up, if you needed You're a condiment moving. from the fridge, you couldn't open the fridge because it would open into one of the tables. Yeah. Or, or if the person furthest from the kitchen needed something seasonings from the kitchen, the person closest to the kitchen would be responsible because there was. Two tables between yeah. the furthest person. Right. It didn't seem very user friendly. Again, somebody else's idea. The couch was really long. Like, in order to watch the TV, you would have to sit at an angle, at an yeah. angle, yeah. or legs up, and the other person sat right. in, inside your legs. I mean, I don't know how you would sit on that. It was an odd. It, it was very long and narrow couch. It was, it was weird. It was an odd design. Um, I will say it was a it was a true custom, so you won't find that floor plan on any of ARI's uh, standard floor sure. plans. Well, that makes sense. This was definitely someone had an idea, and they built that idea. Uh, I will say one thing that comes in very nice with building 20 to 30 trucks a year is – We've built so many trucks. When we go to say, all right, we're going to build this new floor plan, which we're actually in the process of doing right now. Uh, we're in the process of designing a new floor plan for some new tractors. We've done so much of this that we know, like, all right, are all the doors going to be open? Okay. You know, one of the first round of, of trucks we built with the pull-down TV from the roof, super nice. Yeah. Very first day we opened one. I think it might have been your truck. St- Go to open up one of the upper cla- cabinets and slam right into the TV, and it's mm-hmm. like, all right, well, that didn't work. Or, or, the, or the bathroom <laughs> so, door. Or the bathroom, or the bathroom, bathroom door. door with it, yeah. You know? So we've learned, like, a lot of tricks of, like, okay, if I move this thing literally five inches on the on the plan, it makes all the difference in the world. Right. Once it's built, it's a nightmare. Because, like, in the roof, for example, they only put two pieces of structure there for your TV it's not like the entire roof is structural. I mean, it is, but it, it won't, you can't hang from it. Right. right. Uh, except for those places. So to move the TV out five inches would be a total rip the roof out and have to rebuild all that. So if you catch it in the design phase, it's much easier. The tables with the poles, we've got a handful of trucks that have them. In one particular design, like our side-by-side, it is the only thing that'll work. We've right. looked at everything, and this is the best plan. Um, but we try not to use those. Because when you're, you know, trying to eat, as easy as it is for you to put a table up, how do we keep it out of your way? Um, some of the trucks, depending on how the cabinets are, uh, have a square table. Some of them actually have, like, a little angle cut out of them. Have you ever had a truck where the table had the angle cut on it mm-hmm. or it was always squared? You've seen it, though, haven't yes. you, where they have the angle cut out? Yeah. It's because it's too tricky to get in and out of a spot right. if the table's perfectly square. The Western Star was that way. Yes. Yeah. With the angle. So, yes. It's, uh, if it's, it was pointed, you couldn't squeeze into the bench. Yeah. So it's learning those little things. Like one of the things we learned was early on with double A sleepers, we were putting cup holders in the table itself, table itself mm-hmm. which sounds great. When you have it up and you're sitting there eating and the person's driving down the road, you've got a cup holder. You don't have to worry about your cup flying all over the place, right? You can throw those little nonstick um, uh, tablecloths, not tablecloths, but uh Mats. Mats down and hold your plate. But then shortly after that, I had a team that never, ever used their dinette set. They only ever kept the bed down. And they're like, man, it'd be nice if they had a cup holder back here. And I'm like, we did put a cup holder da- back there. But then it occurred to me, it's in the table. Right. And if your bed is down, you have you no cup it. holder. Yep. So now, like on the bolts, and I think the RI as well, there's cup holders 
In the windows area. In the windows area. So, like, just going through that process, going through all those steps, figuring all that out. um, Now when we design a plan, like the last few we've done are really good. Yeah. Um, But it's from so much trouble and error. So when I saw that, I did think to myself, this is not ARI saying, hey, check out what we can do. This is a customer that had a really cool plan, and ARI is like, all right, let's – We'll take it to the show. Yeah. But it was not. Um, I think it served its purpose. It did. Just the general public. It showed what they could do. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know they could put a dishwasher yeah. in there. I mean, I assume they could, but I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So. It was a pretty cool show all in all. It was. I enjoyed my time. Yeah. I, I wish we could have gone to that restaurant. Which restaurant? So right past ARI, past ArcBest, past oh, yeah. all that. They had like a whole restaurant area set up. They did. That um, the lady... You know she yelled at us? Baby. She's like, come in here and get some come food. Come on here and get some food. <laughs> we got collard greens and cornbread and Did sweet she really potatoes. say that? She yes, did. She I did. wish this was. was <laughs> yes, that, she did. Was that on the back end of it? Was, it was, yeah. The back end. I, I wish we would have gone there, it too. It smelled good. It, it looked good. Smell. It was like a buffet. You yeah. paid a price and, it, and you buffeted it up one side and down the other. It was like 20 bucks a person, but uh, compared to the pricing in that building. Oh, yeah. At the other end? Definitely reasonable. Or the walk to the other end? Yeah. So, but we just... Oh, yeah, I think if we had been there the whole weekend, we probably would have made, like, okay, yeah. tomorrow for, for lunch, let's go in there. And but they looked like they had table seating. They, they did. did. They, they had, had table seating. Tons of table yeah. seating. And Whereas you, the other end didn't have you, any room. You weren't going in there unless you were paying for the meal. Yeah. So I think it wasn't, they, like, just free seating. Yeah, and I think drinks were waiter service. No? Oh. I think only the food was buffet, but the drinks were waiter service. Yeah, it looked really nice. It did. Um, yeah, the other side, just a few folks where they have the food court. They've got tables in there. Not enough. Where people were camping out at the mm. tables. They weren't just yeah. eating there, camping out at the tables, having meetings and things. We ended up in a hallway sitting on the floor against the wall. We did. Having our, our meal. It was the most comfortable so. concrete and brick I've ever sat on. It, it was mine, too. <laughs> it was it was divine. <laughs> it was hard to get up. It was so comfortable. I was about to say, I, I chose to stay in because I, I, I didn't think I was going to get up if I went down. So. Uh, not to mention the uh, restroom that not everybody knew about. Oh, yeah, there yeah, was a private restroom, restroom, a VIP yeah. restroom, yeah. Yeah, that was nice. It was uh, it was a great show. I love Louisville. Love being able to hang out in that area. I picked out a steakhouse for us all to go to. It was miserable. Sorry about that. But uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. It was a big chain steakhouse. We, none of us had great expectations for it. No, no, but but they lived up to their three and a half yes, star they rating. Did. Yeah, yeah. I think we were they hungry sure at that point too. Starving. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which is when they didn't bring the food. That's yeah. anyways. Yeah. So um, <laughs> if you get a chance, go see them. Actually, the the thing I got, which is what I remember being so good, the two things I got were delicious. One of them was cold, which aggravated me because yeah. it was supposed to be hot, but it was so good. It was just like I remember because we don't have that particular brand up here um, right. in Columbus, so I haven't had them in probably a decade. Because when I go back home to Louisiana, I'm not going to that chain restaurant. No. I'm going to um, a Cajun restaurant or something, but. Um, no, I thought it was I thought it was a great time, and then uh, we came back to Columbus. I, Eric and I spent an entire day here, Ooh. <laughs> like probably about thirty two hours. I want to yeah, say about, that. about thirty two sure. hours, and then we took off and headed down to Florida. And uh, or is it Florida? You live there. What do you call it? Well, Florida is uh, uh, country music. Yeah, no, country music. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's a rapper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's similar to country. You would yeah, think I'd listen to a good. <laughs> yeah. I know a couple of those songs. That's it. Yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. Low, okay. Low. Yeah. There you go. I know that one. That's their That's song. That's not Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no. don't know. <laughs> it could have been. Apple bottom Boots jeans. With the sheens. No, with the sheen? Florida. Yeah. No, that's not. <laughs> no. Florida. Now nah, nah, I'm curious. <laughs> I know Flo Rider. You do. They do that one song. What is that one song? He sings low. Get low, low. No. That's not Flo Rida. Yeah, it's Flo yeah. Rida featuring T-Pain. Really? Yeah. I stand corrected. Wait, say that again. Wait, <laughs> that again? He sings My House. Welcome to my house. Whistle. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I stand corrected. I'm sorry. He does do a crossover mix song, I think, with a country artist. See, I went totally off. Maybe it was Tim McGraw, but don't quote me on that. Could have been Jason Aldean. I think it was Jason Aldean, but don't quote me on it. Please do not quote. Don't he quote. does whistle. He does. Uh, 
It did have low, and I don't really even listen to him, but that's that's a fine song. But, but you know that song. I know. Yeah. It's well, Rider. Very well. You've you've perfected the dance to that song. Thank you very much. It's a. <laughs> so again, it's how do you how do you say it when you live in Florida? Is it just Florida? I just hate crazy people. Okay. But yeah. Florida. You do have that in Florida. It's that humidity. Yes. Yeah, it gets in your brain. The, the, the sweat just. It just gets in. Yeah. 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 What does she say on Golden Girls? <laughs> Blanche is like, I think it's the heat. We just mature faster in the South. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Blanche, so you and Eric went that. off to Florida. So we went down to Florida. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, so many people I've told that to are like, how was your vacation? And I'm like, well, it would have been fun uh, if it was vacation. But um, we didn't go to vacation. Instead, I went to work. So we went to Disney. I know. Again, people say, well, how was your vacation? But actually, uh, ended up, I went to down there for the Disney Leadership Institute um, and had a great time there. Uh, met up with a couple other fleet owners, and we went and sat through a few days of training. i got to say it was pretty incredible. I, I'd, I've heard for years that Disney's training and, and everything is, uh, is, is on point, and they're, they're really known for doing these huge conferences and bringing on all these famous people. And, uh, and, and it's, it's one of their like lesser known things they do, but, but in the business world. And when you look at like, uh, what, like Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker. When you look at motivational speakers and people that speak on leadership and all that stuff, they're one of the big, big people in town that do this. And, um, so I had the opportunity to go and went and, and had a great time. Um, ended up staying at a Disney resort. That's fun. Cause Disney's one of those places as a kid. I always wanted to go. I always remember watching on television, you know, them talking about it. I mean, you got to remember when I was a kid, Epcot was pretty brand new. Um, so it was always like Epcot and the Magic Kingdom. Come stay at the Contemporary and they'd show you like the monorail going through the building right. and uh, through the hotel and all this stuff. And all the great things that came from Disney. And so I always wanted to go. We, it was never in the cars. We never could make it. To actually go and be able to spend time there, even though we didn't go to the parks, was a lot of fun. And uh, we did stay at the Contemporary. We did get to stay at the hotel where the monorail goes through it. And nice. let me tell you one thing I learned about it. It has buildings outside of it that you sleep in <laughs> that don't have the monorail going through it. That totally surprised me. I was all excited. I'm like, all right, we're staying at the Contemporary. Get to stay at that hotel. I'll be able to look out of my balcony and see the monorail going through the right. building and everything. Then they're like, you're in like the Asian Spice Building or something. I forget what it is. Spice Market Spice something. I don't know. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and it was like down around the corner and off property. And we had it's a fit five minute walk just to get to the actual contemporary building. Yeah. From where we were sleeping. Wow. Yeah. But did you get to ride the monorail? I Ooh, did. Yeah. Uh, I did on the last day before we left the contemporary. We actually took it around and literally just that did, was that was the ride. Did you go in the front? I didn't get to go in the front. How do you get in the front? Because what? I saw. When they were passing by, well, so when I first got on, it was one of those where, like, it's right there, and we have to run for it. Mm -hmm. So we made a run for it and got on. You know, I get on, then Eric gets on after me, and as he's getting on after him, the doors close, like, his his the back of his shirt just mm -hmm. barely clears. Otherwise, he'd have been, like, jerked back. Um, and the first thing I noticed was we were in the fr front of the monorail, but the wall's there. You can't see forward. And I didn't know it was going to do that. I thought you'd be able to see forward. So I did when I got out, I walked over there and I looked in there and I saw a, a, a nice bench that you could sit on. And then there's the place where the monorail guy drives, uh, our gal. Um, it's funny I say guy. The only person I know that drives, that works for Disney and drives the monorail is a lady. It, it looked cool, but I'm like, that's got to be by invite only or something. Like, I, what's the rules? How do you get in there? You just have to ask whenever you're getting on, if you get to the very front and whenever you see the conductor that's driving it. Uh, usually they do it a lot for the kids, but you just simply ask and if they have room, they'll let you in. So probably not the last minute person though. No, that'd no. have been that'd have been yeah. helpful because I've rode up front quite a few times. And it's, it's really really cool to watch them, and whenever they control it, they literally just press a lever. Yeah. It's all automated. It, it knows when to slow down going around the curves, and like he doesn't do anything but just push the lever and it goes. <laughs> There's no brakes. There's nothing. It's Do all they automated. steer? No. It's all automated. That's steer interesting. Steer on the monorail? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I used to, I had a lot of friends that worked at Disney and like that was my way of getting into Disney because I never could afford to go. <laughs> oh. Like Disney's expensive. Yeah. Let's face hey, it. Gotta work yeah. it. So I would always hit up my friends and they always got free passes and everything. Yeah. So like I, when I lived down there, I would go probably twice a month. Oh, wow. wow. It, gives, it was a lot of fun. That's the original meaning of friends with benefits. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> What's the new one? Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> we're uh, down there at Disney and we're having a great time uh, doing these courses. And these courses are intense. I mean, it was 7 a.m. Really? They, put, they, they have courses in tents. They, I mean, these all are, these buildings these they've got, but they've got the courses in tents. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. It's, it's just so, they, they set tents up temporarily while they're doing the courses, or uh, no, this is actually a permanent. Uh, it's in their ballroom area. Their tents, their ballrooms are in tents. No, Vince, oh, <laughs> it's past the tents. <laughs> We're past the tents. You go past the tents to get to the ballrooms. Correct. Got you. Yes, okay, I get it. And then uh, <laughs> they, it's really cool how they do it. So they bring you into this room. And in the um, tent. it's <laughs> it's it's like you know how hotels have ballrooms with the big high ceilings oh. and yeah. they're massive, uh-huh. but you know how they also have ones that are more intimate. So they have the lower ceiling, sure. and they may even be right next to one that has a big high ceiling. But like it's intentionally designed for a smaller group, and right. and we're trying to make it more intimate. Yeah. So you go in there. They had breakfast set up every morning. I did not eat breakfast a single morning, but man, it looked good. The last day we were there, they had um, Mickey Mouse pancakes. Oh, I'm sorry, waffles. Oh, it was brutal. But I'm like, I can't eat. I can't eat pancakes. Did they offer syrup and jelly? Yes, and honey, just in case. They're just in case Pooh Bear showed up. That's right, (laughs) Pooh Berry. Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear. (laughs) You said okay. So, um, roll the tape. No, it's just in case Pooh Bear showed up. It's just in case Pooh Bear showed up. Uh, (laughs) So. You go in there. They got banquet tables set up and everything. It's day one, and uh, they've got. I thought it was so cool. So Samsung makes a television called the Frame, and the reason I'm so uh, aware of this TV is because I own one. Then I've owned two other ones because I love them. They are. If you don't know what a Samsung Frame is, it's Samsung take their television and they put it in like. How to describe this? They changed. The outside of the TV to where, a it it, it it's uh, got a very very narrow, very uh, thin bear, th- very thin bezel. A very thin bezel goes yeah. all the way around it. There's no Samsung logo on it at all. Right. Um, there's no speakers, nothing. You can't see anything. And then they made it square. So like you know, a lot of TVs, if you look at the back, they're kind of like rounded right. or around the edges or something like that. They're molded. This is not that. It's perfectly square. Um, it's a brick basically. They actually sell these like wooden. Frames, frames you can attach to it or you can get they give you the dimensions so you can build your own if you're really creative um and they do all kinds of things they hang them on their wall mine's hung on a wall but they also have them um, uh you can put them on an easel and you can stick them in a corner they can go portrait or landscape they're very right. diverse very cool televisions so that then the gimmick of them is when you turn them off it'll show whatever picture you put there and it doesn't just turn into a black screen it actually shows that screen that image so what disney did was they took disney institute leaders or to disney leadership institute and they put that as their off screen and then put it on the frame and put the frame on an easel so it looked like instead of having just like a a foam board board, cut out of disney leadership institute it was that frame television with that which I thought was crazy expensive for what oh, they're sure. doing. But they're Disney. They have tons of money. It looked really nice, and then it was next to a fireplace, and you're like, aren't you in a hotel? Yeah. They had a fireplace. Wow. And then one day, it was like... Well, you got to warm the tent somehow. You do. Mm-hmm. The first day, it was um, Disney's... Um, are you all familiar with an- animation from like back in the early 20s? Yes. Yeah. They used to have these big machines. They'd put a plate in. They would draw it, and they would put another plate in, and that's how they would create a 3D effect. Mm -hmm. And they had this big, giant contraption that is how they kind of put it all together. They had that in there. And I thought, oh, that's a cool, like, because they don't use it anymore. Like, that's a cool artifact heirloom to have. And then it it was just nicely appointed, you know what I mean? Like, columns, but, like, the columns were made out of cloth. Like, it just, it was very, very well put together. It was but it was small, and, and it was like, all right, so we're going to sit around these round tables and learn. 
okay, that's going to be kind of weird because then I got to turn around to like face you and all this stuff. But whatever that like in my brain, I'm like working out because okay, what we're going to do. We're doing all that. And uh, the lady in eating uh, where they're eating, I'm drinking coffee. And the lady's like, hey, welcome to Disney Institute, Leadership Institute. Just want to welcome you all here, you know, yada, yada, yada. And she goes on. She's like, I think a lot of y'all, um, y'all like our, our setup? Yeah? Well, it's not really, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right, does it? And we're like, mm, you designed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she's like, I have an idea. And on one wall was like a drawing of a of a of a wall, like animation, but like um like a rough sketch of what it would look like. And there was a door in it, but like a drawing of a door. So okay. who cares, right? Yeah. Well it turns out it's a functional door. Oh. And she was like, Let's go through here. So they open up the door and you're like, That looks like a piece of paper, but yeah. okay. Um and then we go through and then you're in this huge ballroom. Everything is set up. They got four or, or three giant television or giant screens, not televisions. I mean, these are like probably 10 foot wide screens, uh, one on each wall. And then on the back, they have two other TVs that are smaller. All the chairs are the most comfortable desk setups I've ever had in my life, wow. like super comfortable chairs with like a little swing out de- uh, thing. They've got high top tables. They've got round tables. They've got some couches in the corners and stuff. And they and they're like, whatever best works for your learning style. If you know sitting in a chair, sitting at a table, sitting at a high top, standing at a table, sitting on a couch, if you need a doodle, whatever. Just, we're all adults. You do whatever helps you learn. And, uh, and, and we've set up this room for all that. And the level of, like, professionalism, but not only that, but perfection yeah. of just everything was just so. Did people pick different locations to sit or did you all sit in the same you general just area sit wherever you want but i mean so, could you see when they they gave you free reign for the way you knew how to learn best so did you like see people go stand for a while or did you go see people use the couch uh, not not right then and there but later on throughout the day we did see like the high top areas people did cycle through those like, we'd go to a break, and people would come back, and they'd move and sit down in a comfortable seat, and you'd see someone else go and grab that and stand. Or um, people would go on the couches and try to get away or, or whatever. Like, we did see some of that changing. A lot of people came in. So, like, it was me and two other fleet owners that were together working to our, our, in, in our little group. But there were a lot of people who, like, brought in their group of three, four, five, six people. So you'd see those people kind of hang out together. And then they had the chairs set up. Everybody had, like, uh, around, uh, around about about this size, um, which is about, what, three-foot diameter or something like that? Yeah, a coffee that. table around, like, four or five desks. Uh, and, again, these uh, desk, I think, like, school, plastic chair, you know, the, the wood and all that stuff. Right. This is not that. This is super comfortable. Then we would go through, and, and, and it was a combination of, like, lectures and – videos and uh, reflection moments where you actually got to jot down ideas that you had. There was a, a very well put together um, booklet each day to go through what we were going to talk about. And then uh, lunch and then after lunch we talked some more and then they would take us actually into the parks. Um, so I did get to go to uh, Epcot, but I didn't get to go inside of Epcot. I actually went to the casting room or casting building at Epcot and we got to walk around there and um, they explained a bunch of stuff that we had learned in the class okay. there. That was Epcot. And then uh, went back and did a debriefing and, and, and left. And we got back from there. They had um, ice cream sandwiches, Mickey Mouse ice cream sandwiches, ice cream bars, and then a couple other like Sherbert and stuff like that uh, waiting for us. And then with, uh, another day we did like Animal Kingdom and that way, I actually went inside the park and like talked to people and stuff. So it was very interactive, very like, let's talk about this stuff, learn about this stuff, break into groups and talk about stuff. There were games we played to try to figure stuff out, where they talked about communication and such. And everything we did had a point. It wasn't like, you know, I've I've done events before where they're like, hey, we're gonna get to know everybody. So uh, tell us your name and your favorite ice cream character, or ice cream flavor or something. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to remember any of that. Like, wh- <laughs> why, why, just to break the ice so we right. start conversation? They didn't do that. 
like everything that we did was very pointed, very this is what we're trying to get you to understand about your leadership, about mixed signals, about you know, I don't know, it was just, it was just everything was very pointed to a point where you understood like oh, that's what they mean. Um and sometimes if you were keened in, you could see what was going on, but sometimes you couldn't. Sometimes it was like, what are they talking about? And then you'd get a little further and be like, oh. Oh, okay. I see what, oh, hmm. I never thought of it from that perspective. There were a lot of, I never thought of it from that perspective moments. So that was that was really good. I enjoyed the class a lot. Um, had a blast. And of course, again, it was seven, that was what I was say, it's seven o'clock in the morning okay. until five p.m. Oof. Wow. It was a long day. Yeah, intense. Very intense. Very. I those yeah, like <laughs> I do the fleet intermings with FedEx and Panther and I've been through a bunch of other companies like let's get everybody together and, and chat or whatever and you just struggle to stay awake. Sure. I mean you really do. Like it's like, oh gosh, I can't listen to another conversation about sales or motivation or whatever. <laughs> with it being that crazy schedule and then most nights we were out past midnight, would you say? One night we got back around midnight. Yeah. Well, the one night. <laughs> we had to. <laughs> one night we got back at like 2 a.m. That's another story. We can't talk about it, though, because cops and all. But, right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it not was. Not until it's all said and done, legal proceedings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, we. Uh, for me to have that little sleep, never felt the need to nod off. I never got tired. It was so engaging. Yeah, that kept you moving. That is, it's hard to do. I mean, to take a group of a bunch of adults yeah, and to be able to capture what you're saying and, and not lose your right. audience and not have people get tired, I, I mean, I was super impressed. Nice. So I'm looking forward to taking a lot of stuff I've learned uh, over the past uh, week. Uh, I've got some work workbook stuff that Eric and I are going to be talking about over the next few weeks and just some things I've learned and some stuff that I wanted to, uh, that how does it fit within our company? You know, that was a big thing of theirs is like, um, how do you take what you've learned and apply it or if it's not, or learn if it's not applicable, like, you know, both can be true. Um, they did a very good job of breaking down, like, here's the business theory aspect of it. Here's a great some great ideas to go along with it, and then here's how we do it at Disney. The how we do it at Disney doesn't necessarily apply to me, but the other part of it does, right? Because um, that's one thing too I was worried about was is this just going to be a big plug for Disney, right. and all we're going to do is learn about Disney this, Disney that? No, like they're taking real concepts in leadership or or some of the other stuff we talked about, and then applying it. And showing us, like, here's the ideas you need to get. Here's the concepts you need to learn. Oh, yeah, here's how we do it. But it's up to you then to figure out how does it fit into your mold. Right. Uh, which I loved. I really liked how they, they handle that. Nice. So uh, Eric and I will be talking about that over the next few weeks. Give us some good content. I'm sure all the staff members are going to be like, what is all this? You <laughs> know, <laughs> and we're going to communicate some ideas with you all. And um, I've already had some. I had a few on the fly. Actually, at the thing where I texted some of y'all and was like, hey, how do we feel about X, Y, or Z? Because yeah. I'm not so sure. Yeah. And uh, so it's been uh, it's been really good. It's I don't forget, it, It's hard to take time to reinvest in yourself. It is. So um, I did like this. I, I have thought about, and I've already talked to a couple other fleet owner friends of mine that weren't at this, about, like, I'm going to try and look at some business development business leadership development stuff and maybe let's take a weekend and go do some stuff here or there just uh and some some other fleet owners that maybe aren't sa same size as we are but i think could benefit from it right um i i was surprised when you sent out the mickey mouse ears hats for all of us to wear as our work uniform i was really surprised though when buttermilk said no she's not wearing it that I was like, I thought she'd be the first one to want to wear the Mickey Mouse ears as a work uniform, but when she said no, I, I was completely surprised. And then when you took it back and said, "Well, okay, we don't have to wear them," 
I was sad to part with mine. Is that well, why you're crying? I, what you, it is why I'm crying, yes. What you don't know is they were $100 a piece. Okay. Yeah. And we were able to sell them on eBay for 250 each. Oh, good so. business move. Good business <laughs> the, uh, move. Did Disney you know, teach you that part, too? They did. So, you know, <laughs> we buy these for $5 a piece, but in the in the theme parks, we sell Disney's them for... Disney's not buying them for $5 a piece. <laughs> They're buying them for $0.88 cents yeah, a piece. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Don still got his pair. That was cool. I got my mine is a. Uh, it's not my. It's not. It my, is. That's, it's that's not scary my. when you call me. <laughs> it's so scary when that's you call. It's huge on my phone. Is it on yours it, too? It is the whole phone. I know. I call him. <laughs> it is the I call whole him phone. The other day. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. It's me yeah. with my Disney Leadership Institute um, ears on. Yeah. I seen the photo, but I didn't update yeah. my contacts. No. Yeah, I didn't it, either. It just contact. it just came up. It pops up on mine. It's like. New photo available. Do you want to update? And oh, just, that's what I I'm did. Not then. Yeah, it, I, I've got I, my I made that mistake. <laughs> I don't know that I clicked yes. It's just there. I've declined a couple. Like I've got a great one of Kelly. I think y'all have seen it. That I'm not yes. allowed to show anybody ever yes. again. But I'm like, that's it for life. She hates it. That's okay. I love Heather's. My Heather. Mm-hmm. Not your Heather. Are the other Heather? The other Heather, Heather. Brookhart. Heather from Oregon. Yes. Yes, hers. Hers is Mardi Gras. Our very first year ever out here on the truck, we did uh, Mardi Gras, and she's beat it up, makeup up, and somehow she ended up with some kind of a green candy in her mouth, or a green cocktail, I mm-hmm. think is what it was, and she went to stick her tongue out at me, and her whole tongue is just plum green, and all of the little sparkles and jewels she has on her green and purple. Oh my gosh, and it's it so just, funny. And she's got lighted stars on her head, and... um. That's what I have for her, and I love seeing it when she calls me. I'm like, what? It, well, it was a great memory, too, right? Yeah. So, but you know, just sometimes you have those great photos that make a great contact yep. for your person. And I don't I don't have many of those. I'm not a huge person who, like, jumped on the whole, like, personalize the ringtone or the photo or right. whatever. I'm yeah. just kind of is what it is. But I've got that for a couple people. A couple, a couple times I've seen things where I'm yeah. like, that's what that's got to be. But, um. Did end up getting sick um, towards the end of the trip and uh, really bad allergies, which makes sense. Florida from Ohio, it's lots of seasonal yeah. Yeah. gunk going around and uh, ended up getting on some antibiotics and prednisone. Uh, love a good steroid. And uh, <laughs> I did, you know, the one where it's like take six the first day, take five the second day, four, then three, then two, then one. You gotta wean yourself off them kind the of thing. Taper. Yeah. So I did that, and that's going to lead us into everyone's favorite segment of the show, which we didn't do last week because we were out and about and didn't have a scale, but did do today, or we're going to do today, and that is Patrick's weight loss journey. And I had to say, I thought I did really good at Disney. I did not eat breakfast at all, period. And then for lunch, I made carb smart, healthy options, I thought. Um, and then for dinner, I did pretty good. Um, the only dessert I got at dinner was one night we got a creme brulee because I'm a sucker for a creme brulee. Yes, so I are. wanted to give it a shot. And we were at a really high end steakhouse. I was not paying the bill, so I didn't sure. mind. But um, I got a creme brulee there because the higher the higher end the steakhouse, typically the better the the creme brulee. Were you disappointed? The sugar, are. the sugar topping on top was perfect. Oh, I mean, I I have a f- method for how I test that, <laughs> and it was perfect. I mean, perfect. I mean, flawless perfection. But the custard was the consistency of cheesecake. Ooh, it's a little, a little too thick. A little too thick. Yeah. Yeah. Good flavor. I mean, I had a couple bites, and I was like, "This is delicious." But it is way too Thick, dense. dense. And so um, I literally had a couple bites and pushed it away. And they were like, oh, my God, is it not good? Is it not good? I'm like, the people at the table, I'm like, it, it's tasty. It's just not right. Yeah, It's not it, worth the extra calories. It's not worth the extra. Unless exactly. it's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I pushed it away, and, uh, and that was the only dessert I had. Got on the prednisone, got on the steroid. I don't know about y'all. Every time I take a steroid... I immediately balloon up, um, and I noticed it as soon as I took it. I, t- I joked with Eric. I said, as soon as I take these, I'm going to start gaining weight. Watch. And I mean, like, immediately, 
my shirts were tighter. I don't know if it's so much you gain a lot of weight as much as that you get um water. You hold onto the water. You hold on the water and yeah. just get yeah. Yeah. So um, I did I did feel that, and then when I got off it, I immediately saw the weight crash back down. So this morning's weigh in was two seventy seven. Um, nice. So I've I've gained a couple pounds since the last weigh in, um, but a week at Disney or Florida. Well, not a full week, but yeah. four or five days at Disney. And then um, Matt's before that. Matt's before that, taking the pill that gains keeps all that water weight or whatever. Right. I'm actually very happy that that's all it was. Yeah. I would like to be, say that I've lost more weight, right? Um, but that was a lot to go on to only see a two pound that's not change. Bad. Um. So, anyways, it's 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 not as good as it could be. I certainly wish I had a a better result for you. Uh, maybe next next time I will. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's Patrick's weigh in. What's your feeling of the day? Oh, and my feeling of the day is going to be uh, not a feeling. Oh, it's not a feeling. It's, this has been brought up a couple of times, so I decided to bring it up tonight. This right here is called a snack. So um, you get feelings. You're supposed to stick to those five feelings and have a lean and green. That's the idea, right? They understand that at some point you may not want just a fueling. You may be in the mood for something else. And so people would sneak in a sixth fueling, which is lots of, it has carbs, it has um, higher calorie content. Like, it's not designed for that. So they came up with uh, several snack options. This happens to be one of my favorites. Popcorn. And it's actually a reasonably healthy size bag of popcorn. It is. Um, 70 calories, uh, six carbs, uh, protein, fiber, it's got some of that stuff in it, too. Um, this one is sharp cheddar cheese and sour cream flavored popcorn. It's good popcorn. It's crunchy when you bite mm -hmm. into it. It's not soggy because um, I hate soggy popcorn. You, you know what I'm talking about? Chewy. When chewy, chewy. Yeah, you bite into it, and you're chewy. like, mm, uh, yeah. This is not. It's actually really good, really nice, crispy popcorn. The flavor is the bomb.com, I believe, is how you would put it, Melissa. That's how I would put it. Um, it's extremely tasty. Those are good. This is a problem where it's so good, sometimes you get through a bag and you're like, I want more. I want more. Uh, so you got to be careful with these. But um, super delicious. I really like them. And, you know, if you have a snack every day, you're hurting yourself. But if you just want one every now and then, yep. it's a great option. It's a great portion. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to feel guilty that you did it. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's the, uh, it's not feeling of the week, but that's the snack. That's the snack of the week. Um, I did see Melissa. Yes. You had an article. I did. That you uh, were talking about that uh, I believe is very timely, especially considering in a couple days we're about to see the world come to an end. We are? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? We put, are we supposed to wear our white Nike shoes and, um, I didn't know that was a thing. No, that's not a that's not an eclipse. That's an asteroid, right? <laughs> meteor. What is it? You were in California during that time. I was. I believe it was a meteor. Is a meteor. Yeah. Do you remember that, Jerry? Mm mm. Was it the um, Heaven's Gate? Heaven's Gate people. Oh yeah, I would just watch that. It was in the nineties, right? Yes, yeah. with the white we, tennis shoes. Yeah. We just watched that. <coughs> I we was watched a thing on it. I was at my grandma's house in Alabama, and we out. The, so in Louisiana, you can't. Like where I live, there's too much light pollution. You can't see anything. I don't know if in LA if you could see it or not. No. Uh, yeah. It, uh, so, but we just happened to be at Grandma's house, and she lived at the time in rural Alabama. She had a huge area. Uh, her uh, lot was completely clear cut. Trees on the sides, two magnolia uh, trees in the middle. It was a beautiful property. Which she sold it. My cousin bought it, and I'm so happy it's in the family still. It's a yeah. beautiful property. But out there, I mean, you can see everything. Like, it's crazy. You're like, that's Mars. That's Venus. You know, that's a meteor. Like, so we were out there actually watching the meteor and thought it was so cool. And then I remember the next morning, the news, and they were talking about all that at Grandma's house. You know, I could just see myself in that living room, the wood floor, the brick fireplace, the television in the corner. Like, I have a perfect mental image of that. And it, just thinking how crazy that was, and then asking my dad like, why would they do that? And him, because I was at that, I was at the age where he like had to explain to me cults because I didn't comprehend 
why would you kill yourself yeah. for this? And yeah. Yeah, there's a show on Hulu. It's like a Rewind the 90s or, or something like that. And that's one episode we just watched. We actually watched it this past weekend. And they like all overdosed on sleeping pills or something. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The other episode is on uh, slime from Nickelodeon. <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> so April 8th is the total solar eclipse, if everybody doesn't know that already. But I think we do. Um, and you got to get the special glasses and whatnot if you're going to watch that. Please do not look directly and at the sun. And you have to do something special with your phone. I saw, I ran across an article. I did not read it. I'm sorry. But they said, don't think that you can just take pictures with your phone either. Be careful with cameras and whatever. But Or maybe it was just cameras. Again, I did not read an article on that. My article is different. Um, I wonder if, if it was film. Film wouldn't react well to being at the sun. Maybe. Um, but it is happening on uh, April 8th. And it will stretch from Texas to Maine. And this article came from Hylent.com. I think that's kind of funny because it's spelled H-Y-L-A-N-T.com. Kind of like Highfield, that H-Y. I thought that was neat. Um, I found their article interesting because it had 12 tips to um, help truckers over the road. And uh, I just kind of wanted to quickly share some tips and tricks that might be helpful for um, not only Highfield drivers, but any truckers that may be listening to the podcast. Um, It does say, avoid routing trucks to or through the path of the eclipse. Again, Texas to Maine. I know there's some uh, photos out there that show the prediction of where it's going. So maybe part of your pre-trip, see if you're going to be going through the route. Uh, I did say, number two, ensure trucks are fully fueled in case of traffic delays. Uh, Number three, reminder, drivers to buckle up. That's kind of a no-brainer. It should be that way anyway. should be, yeah. You would think. Uh, but, hey, just a reminder. Uh, number four, um, to turn on your headlights. Oh, it's a good idea. Yeah. I might not have thought about that. Because it's going to go dark. Yep. Okay, turn on your headlights. Um, five, be alert for pedestrians who may be distracted and looking up to the sky. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Uh, number six... To drive defensively and watch for nearby drivers possibly swerving into your lane. So you're trying to actively look at it while still in car motion, right? People are going to do silly things. Can we tell people just to park during that time? Well, again, I'm talking about the cars around you. I know. Uh, Maybe even other truck drivers around you. Um, Number seven. Have your snacks and water in the cab in case of lengthy delays. So have those within reach of you in case, again, you're stuck in traffic. Um, Use your sun visors to block the sun and avoid looking at it. Brianna, I'll be tempted to look at it. Yeah. It's a pretty cool phenomenon. Uh, Put your cell phones down and avoid taking pictures of the eclipse while driving. You shouldn't be driving with that in your hand anyway, but we definitely don't want uh, distracted driving. Wear eclipse. Oh, do not wear. This is a pretty big one. Number 10. Do not wear eclipse glasses while driving. So can I ask a question? Yes. The eclipse glasses, I imagine, are super dark sunglasses with UV protection? Yes. Okay. Because I haven't... I've, I've seen them, but I haven't, like, touched one or really looked at it. They're very dark. It's almost like yeah. you're in a dark room. They're, I was gonna they're s- akin to, like, welding goggles. That's what, that's what I was about yeah. to go with. I remember when I... Um, a buddy of mine out in Texas... I I never welded. I'm not a welder. Um, he wanted me to... He was like, you want to try it? And I was like, sure. So he put a, a the shield on my face. Right. And I'm like... You can't see anything. Yeah, I can't I'm like, see I can't. Anything. I literally I cannot. I, the brightest day, middle of Texas. Right. I'm like, I literally can't see a thing. Um, so if it's something like that, I could see the temptation to be like, let me throw it on real quick, and then not realize like, oh my gosh, I now can't see how fast right. I'm going. I yeah. can't see anything. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number eleven, use extra caution once the eclipse is over. Traffic will be at its peak. That's another good point because. Kind of like leaving a football game. Everybody took their time coming in. Yep. To get set up and prepared. But But once once it's it's over, over, we're out of here. Yeah. Um, And number 12 was to be patient and polite. Um, You are the face of the company is kind of what they said. Uh, They had a finally 
Uh, if drivers plan to pull into a safe space, um, such as a parking lot, to watch the eclipse, they should ensure that whatever eclipse glasses they purchase have been appropriately tested and will protect your eyes. Because if you didn't wear appropriate, then you got back in your truck, that also could create issues. So I thought it was a great article, just from tips and tricks. Again, it's not the entire United States that's going to be affected, but if you're in those peak areas, which seem to be like middle of America, kind of peak driving areas, um, you just want to be a little more cautious. And it's going to be a lot leading into it, the peak time, and then obviously, like they said, a lot after it. So it's not just a quick yeah, 30 seconds of it doing its thing or however long it's predicted. I don't even know that. Well, the totality over any given region is only a couple of minutes, right? Yeah. So it, it's fairly quick. And then I can see people being like, all right, show's over and leaving. Um, the glasses and looking up at the sun, I will tell you, several years ago in Louisiana, we had a solar uh, 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 solar eclipse, lunar eclipse. What's it called? Solar eclipse? Solar eclipse. Solar That's eclipse. what's happening now. Yeah, we had a yeah. solar eclipse. Um, and we were in the path of totality. I remember for that one, I looked up. There was no solar, there was no solar eclipse glasses that they sold at Walmart or anything <laughs> like that. But they would just tell you don't look directly at the sun. And I remember looking up at it. Even though the sun is blocked out, there's still so much rays going around it yeah. that it's still bright. To the point where it's actually still really hard to see something. So unless you have the proper equipment, you may not necessarily be able to see it. And, you know, it's, it's weird. It's not like the whole earth is going to go dark like it right. at night. But that's how I think it's how it's portrayed in film is when they are in those kind of situations like, oh, it goes dark and it's got this weird twilight vibe or whatever. It's not going to quite be that dramatic, yeah. um, which I think is where, yeah, you need special equipment to be able to actually see it even. Yeah. Um, One other little tidbit that I would probably throw back in there, piggyback off of what you said, is they're estimating like over 2 million people traveling for this event. If you don't have to travel, stay home. Yeah. Sit in your backyard. Enjoy a cookout, friends, family. Yeah. You could stay at a parking lot, a, a truck stop, or maybe that's whatever it is you do uh, on a reset or something. I mean, it's a great time to grab a reset. Yeah. Just avoid that. That peak time across America for all of that. When you were also talking about route planning. Yep. You know, um, like with our carriers we work with, they allow you to plan your own routes, with the exception of hazmat, because that can be a little tricky, legally yeah. speaking. But but you do pretty much get your your choice of where you want to go. Um, this might be a situation where, like, hey, maybe if I drop down south and then cross east or cross west, as opposed to crossing west and then dropping down south, like maybe it makes more sense to go a different route than I normally would because it keeps me out of that trafficked area. Sure. Like if you're driving down 95 and headed towards Florida, you're probably not going to encounter the same traffic as someone who's crossing 70 in, uh, right through Indiana. Yeah. So, um, you know, it may, be, it may make sense to like take, I don't want to say the out-of-the-way route, but maybe square up your route a little bit and drop down further south or go further north. If you're going to be cutting across uh, from, like, California over, maybe jump up to the 80 and come across. That way you're not going to be – well, I guess at that point you won't – you'd be too far out of it anyways. But yeah. if you're coming from Laredo, maybe jump up north and then head west or east instead of going to uh, that whole, and like don't, – And don't think maybe rural is going to be best. Um, I think you were talking earlier that – or somebody oh, was uh, – uh, uh, Jerry don't was. don't think rural is always going to be the better route either, because you were saying what yeah, earlier? Yeah, they're actually premium pricing for parking. A lot of farmers are actually charging upwards of six hundred dollars uh, for people to come in and park on their property wow. to line up for this. I need to buy land for tomorrow <laughs> or for Monday. I know whatever day that is. Phenomena. It's a it's a cool phenomenon. Yeah. Phenomena. Um, phenomena. Do, 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 do. My phenomena. Hi, <coughs> Sharona. So, um, it's Pirate, a. I know the song you're singing. I'm, I'm dying here. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a cool, uh, it's a cool thing that's gonna be happening. Yeah. And if you are in a place where you can see it, take the time, do it. Yeah. Like, what do they say it's gonna happen again in 2040 something? Uh, well, it'll happen again, but whether or not a this path, I yeah. think it won't happen again t for like 90 years. Yeah, there's some weird like. Because I did read originally, I was like, 90-something years. And I'm like, we we had one 
not not too long ago. I can't yeah. believe it's going to take that long. And it is. We have four of these across the earth a year. It's just maybe they have it in China. Maybe they have it in Indi- India. Right. They don't They're necessarily have it here. And so then we do get some here in America, but they take different paths. Maybe they don't last as long, right? It's not necessarily um, – where the whole country can see it or like this one's covering so much of the country. I think that's what makes it crazy. Yes. Um, it's we had covering, one in Oregon a couple years it's ago. It's covering the important parts this time. <laughs> 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 yeah. We had one in Oregon. Uh, I was working at the um, hospital at the time about a year and a half, two years maybe before I came out and we had to wear the special glasses to watch that one. That's very cool. So, and they, they kind of, if you didn't have something truly important, they allowed us to kind of jaunt outside somewhere and quickly yeah. watch it and then come back in. Again, it's not long. I mean, it's only no. a few minutes. Um, I'm going to watch it. Me and Don's got our glasses. You're going to watch them here or y'all going to head out? Oh, no. I'm just going to step outside and look <laughs> up. <laughs> you're Col- like Columbus is not – we're like right on the edge. Yeah, of you're not going to see 100%. You're going to yeah. get like 98%. Yeah. Will that be enough? Yeah, it'll be plenty. <laughs> That's funny. It's awesome. It's funny. So I saw an article on CDL Life that I thought was interesting. Okay. Um, there is a bill that's been introduced in uh, Congress to try and streamline the process for truckers applying for their hazmat endorsement or their TWIC card. Um, these are both things that you have to go through TSA to get your background check, your fingerprints and background check done. Uh, and they're trying to eliminate duplicating the cost mm. of getting these things done because they're using the exact same fingerprints and background check process for both. So they're trying to make it easier, less costly for drivers to get these security clearances, basically. So it's, it's a new thing. It's, it's just been introduced recently, um, but they're again, they're trying to adjust what that, that cost looks like and the barrier to entry for drivers looking to get their ha- their their hazmat endorsement or their TWIC card and, so, and their TWIC card. So is this just kind of building on what they've already done with the uh, pre-check? It is. Uh, it's build- It's also building on, if you go to get a hazmat endorsement and a TWIC card at the same time, you don't pay the exact same amount for both. There is some discount to, to add uh, one or the other, mm-hmm. if you already have one. Um, but they're trying to eliminate that extra cost completely. Uh, and so you just, so yeah, yes. So uh, for those that don't know, if you're a commercial driver and you have a hazmat endorsement, uh, you also have TSA pre-check without having to, to do anything different. Um, the way you use that is when you book airfare in the, the spot for a known traveler number, you put in your two-digit state and then your CDL number, and that is your known traveler number. So when you get your boarding pass, it'll say TSA pre-check on it, possibly. Sometimes they don't, um, but it'll say TSA pre-check, and you can go through the pre-check line when you're going through the TSA security lines at the airport. And that's at no additional charge. Yeah, That is just something that's added on there. So in this case, if you went for a TWIC card and a hazmat endorsement, you would pay one fee, this, 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 that same fee would cover both of those endorsements. There's no extra money. It's just the one fee, and the, the TSA pre-check would be a part of that as well. So what are they trying to do? I mean, like, so they're they're basically like saying it's a cash grab, basically, right? Like they're just saying if you uh, get a, a hazmat endorsement and a twig, we'll, we'll cut you a break on the price, make it a little cheaper. And and they're now trying to say like that's even not unfair. That's not fair. That's exactly what they're doing. Let's just go ahead and we're going through the same background process as it is. It's no additional work. There's no additional work. Why are we charging an extra fee for the exact same background check? Yeah. So yeah, they they are looking to to eliminate that cost and make it easier for drivers to get these credentials. Yeah. You know. So if we need drivers to run hazmat or be able to access ports and airports, well. Let's get them get those endorsements if they're going through the exact same process. Well, and it makes sense too. I mean, like, you know, th- as weird as it is to say, the federal government's not a for-profit company. No, they're not. So they don't really they're need not. to throw in the a- value-added whatever they should be. If it's a civil service, sure, do it. Yeah, yeah. this is a bill will allow would allow truckers using truckers use existing valid background checks. 
for multiple TSA credentials without paying a duplicate cost. So they're so again, That'd like if nice. you got your your hazmat today, and then four months from now you're like, oh hey, I now find a need for a Twit card. You can just get the Twit card, and there wouldn't be a fee associated with it. I would imagine that if if there was no fee associated with it, you just get them all at once. I would think so. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. If, if I were to go in today, already having my hazmat endorsement, then I would pay a another fee to mm-hmm. get the Twit card, but I wouldn't pay the full amount for a brand new background check. There would still would still be another fee for that. Sure. This is it's called the Transportation Security Screening Modernization Act. Yes, no. it is. What's well, that? What's that stand for? Is there an acronym that goes with it? TSSMA. Well, they they didn't do anything fancy. Tis, with it then. Tisma. Tisma. <laughs> yeah, I know when when I got my I got my HMA HME first, my hazmat mm-hmm. on my license. Eric did too at the same time, and then uh, we ended up getting our Twit card next, and then we ended up getting our. Pre-check. We also got global entry. Oh, did we just get pre-check? I don't remember. Uh, following. So, what are all those fees added up? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, I, think I did the exact same thing. We're like three hundred fifty dollars into it each, or something like that. Hazmat. Then I went and did Twick. Then I went and got pre-check. And then I went back. You got global first entry. Time I went to Italy with you and got my global entry, and yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. Same exact every single yep. time. Oh. Uh, well, that's good. I mean, it, you know, we are so used to these articles being how is the federal government or the local governments screwing the truck driver over. Sure. It is really nice to see, hey, here's something they're actually doing better with. Yeah. Um, I like their last uh, little ditty. It says, Trucker, truckers and other transportation professionals often need a variety of security certifications to do their job. However, maintaining so many different credentials takes time money and can be complicated to ease that burden our bill will streamline the tsa's certification process without sacrificing security that's very cool well i appreciate them for pushing it through and it's not done no nope. right still gonna be it just went to the senate okay. yeah it, it, it's, on March 14th. it's just it's just starting the process so it might be some time before we see this but i thought it was interesting that they're looking to eliminate fees for us absolutely i hope uh in a few weeks months we are Reporting that it passed and uh, our president signed Let's it. Let's hope and, we are. Uh, it's a done deal. Um, Let's hope we are. I think it's time, too. Yeah. You know, your time, finding the location, making the appointment. If you're OTR, how do you arrange your schedule with your freight to make it home in time for right. the appointment? You know, all of that stuff. It's just time consuming. Well, if you're, in, and I look at it as if you're administration, whatever that may be, uh, right now it's, Biden's administration, but this is pretty universal. Most presidents agree to this. If your administration is, how do we help uh, people working in the workforce do their job easier, better, bring more money home to their families? Which again, I think, I think you go back. I think Trump's administration did the same thing. I think Obama's administration did the same thing. I think, like at the end of the day, that kind of stuff they they typically at least say. That that's what they want to do. Right. When something like this happens, it's actually a little proof that, like, okay, you're standing behind what you're saying. So hopefully there won't be any pushback. I yeah. mean, yeah, let's you know, not. I'm sure there's a study being done somewhere talking about how much money the federal government's not going to make because of it. And maybe that's going to be a hang up for some people, but hopefully, uh, hopefully not too bad. But again, the government's not a, not a, a for profit. Entity, Correct. right? Yeah. Um, need to, to, enough money to take care of bills, and that's it. I do feel so like sometimes they forget that. I think they do. Uh, right now, a new application for a, H, a hazmat endorsement is eighty six fifty. If yes. you're in a state that accepts the threat assessment for a Twit card in place of a separate threat assessment for a hazmat endorsement, yes, then your application for a Hazmat endorsement is forty one dollars. Okay, so it, there is some state stuff going on in there too, yeah. but um, that's a mouthful. Well, we've seen, uh, yeah, and we've seen that too with uh, people getting their uh, HMEs ac- or hazmat endorsement across the country. Uh, some states say go get fingerprinted, get right. approved for that, come and here take and test. take your test. Some say go do your test and then fingerprint. Yeah. Some say we don't want you fingerprinting with TSA. 
You come here and fingerprint inside mm-hmm. of our state with our state's people. Yep. Um, like it is wildly crazy how that is um, strange. That is across the board. Um, I mean, you know, when it comes to like a driver's license, all the states have a repro- reciprocity. 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 Um, for what your state has issued you, um, but it really falls back to your state and them issuing that license, and so that state has, you know, states' rights sure. to issue it according to whatever rules and policies and yeah. such they want to do. Right, right. So, um, and having changed my CDL three times in the last four years, four years, five years. Well, starting with getting in Oregon originally, mm-hmm. and then we we moved to South Dakota and switched to South Dakota, and then moving to Ohio. Both South Dakota and Ohio required new hazmat written test yeah before we could they 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 Mm -hmm. move over our hazmat endorsement yeah and then getting your tsa transferred that was just a pain in the butt yeah 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 i experienced that when i came from louisiana to ohio well again at least the federal government is trying to make their portion of it easier sure so that'd be nice and let's hope that streamlines some of the state stuff too absolutely and help equip people to make more money right i mean at the end of the day if you have a hazmat in a twig you're most likely if you're in an industry that serves one or the other, you need one or the other. Right. And uh, it'll help put a little more dollars in your pocket without hurting as bad. Uh, I did get some um, preliminary bad news. So I have heard under the table in a dark room. That you're airing on YouTube. With the air conditioner turned on full blast cold. (laughs) Down the hallway. Oh. From a secretary, mm-hmm. desk that was empty, outside of a Macy's. Really? That there will be no expo this year. Oh. Mm. So tomorrow they'll announce there is one, and of I'll course. have bad data. Yep. Uh, but I, that's what I've been told. I've been told that it is officially canceled. But again, I've not been officially told that from the officials. I've been unofficially told that from someone else. So. But it's a solid source. It's a good source. So I don't think it's going to happen this year, and it makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah, that is sad. Um, it's always been something that we've enjoyed uh, doing over the years, uh, being a part of. I remember the very first time we ever went back in 2012, 13? 2013. Um, Eric won the 50-inch flat-screen television. Nice. Um, at the casino night, and we've been to everyone since. And, um, yeah, it feels like a little piece of the industry just kind of, like, hurt. Yeah. So. Um, well, hopefully they'll revisit it next year. I'm hoping they revisit it either next year or maybe they try to put something together at the last minute to, like, resemble it. Right. That, that's still a possibility if they get enough pushback, maybe. Something will happen. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I know we've been kind of teasing it along these past few episodes, yeah. and we did obviously it's such a big deal about it last year. I just thought it was fair to let everybody know. From what I've heard, as of a few days ago, it is no moss. So that being said, if you enjoy what you've been listening to and you like uh, to hear us ch- yammer on and chat and talk about meaningless nonsense and news articles <laughs> and our experiences and the weather. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, share the video if you can. Uh, if you want to know we're going uh, to be on uh, and you don't remember, we're on every Saturday morning we post these. You can also hit that notification bell and it'll send you a little message every time yeah. a new one drops. Um, our schedules are kind of crazy, so we're trying to figure out how we're going to pull next week's episode off. Um, but... Uh, if we end up not being able to do it, we'll see you the following week. And, uh, we just thank you for everything you're doing. Again, if you know someone who's like, Hey, they're driving down the road for a couple hours. They could use a little entertainment, a little, little something to take the edge off. Throw them our way. We'd love to, uh, tickle their ears with our poetry. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, Jerry, what I forget. If you're interested in finding out more about expediting or joining the Highfield family, check us out at www.highfieldtrucking.com. Um, 
there's lots of information on the website. Chat with one of our recruiting ladies uh, or possibly me. And um, yeah, we'd love to talk to you and, and tell you more. If you have any ideas for The Outer Belt, any things you want us to talk about, discuss, you can find us at The Outer Belt on Facebook. Where are we? <laughs> the, <laughs> the Outer Belt on Facebook. Uh, the underscore Outer Belt on Instagram. And you can also send us an email at the Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com. Yep. And uh, we also uh, do some stuff with high field trucking as well. So you can find us over there. Boy, I think you can just find us. Yeah, I think you can just find us. Did you us. mention if all you the podcast just... platforms? Oh, we're on, we're on all. podcast platform. Thank you. Yeah, your favorite podcasting platform. Leave reviews, thumbs up, whatever you have to do there on those podcast forms. Absolutely. We're also on your least favorite podcast uh, yeah. form. So, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, we try to we try to, to be even killed on that. Um, Equal opportunity. Yes. Until next time, drive safe, make good decisions. Don't leave money on the table either. Never. And keep those wheels a-turning. Good night. <laughs>